But joining us now, author Peter Schweitzer, his new book, Clinton Cash, the untold story of how and why foreign governments and businesses helped make Bill and Hillary rich. Uh, it's not even out yet. It's not May 5th. Generating a lot of discussion. Yeah, I mean, it's an understatement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> OK, so let's let's get into this. Um, sure. First of all, you say I'm focusing specifically on financial. As you're setting up the book, right. you're focusing specifically on financial transactions involving foreign businesses, investors and governments. Foreign interests can't donate to political campaigns, but they can pay money for speeches and they can donate to the Clinton Foundation. Are they doing so to buy influence? Does the timing of the payments come Side with the key decisions by U.S. government officials. Are they successful in obtaining favorable outcomes? What did you find? Did you find any proof that the answer to these questions are yes? Well, I think the answers are yes in the pattern of behavior. No, I, but what's the proof? Well, I think the proof is you look at a series of actions in which money flows to the Clintons, either through speaking fees or Clinton Foundation donors. Hillary Clinton takes a course of action that benefits those donors. In many cases, I think outlined in the book, she is reversing course on policy prescriptions as it relates to India, as it relates to CFIUS, as it relates to another. So it's Do you have like a chronico chronological breakdown so, so, of yeah. this so, was so done let, let, and then so this let, was let's go, That's exactly some, it. Let's yes. give us some specifics. Go ahead. India. Well, for example, India. Uh, so you had in 1998, the Indian government conducted nuclear tests. Bill Clinton imposed restrictions on the export of U.S. nuclear technology because this violated the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uh, Hillary Clinton supported that position. In 2005, the Indian government wanted those restrictions listed. Lifted. Hillary Clinton at that time supported a killer amendment to stop that from happening. After 2005, a number of Indian interests, including an Indian politician that admits now that his donation to the Clinton Foundation wasn't even his money. Uh, those donations flowed in 2008. She reverses course and supports the export of U.S. nuclear technology. And by the way, her top aides, Bob Einhorn and others, her top advisors of nonproliferation, were still opposed to that agreement. Give us another example. Uh, another example. Example um, would involve speaking fees. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton's State Department did the review on the Keystone Pipeline. Bill Clinton had never given a speech before for TD Bank in in Canada. Uh, as this review is going on, he does two million dollars worth of speeches for TD Bank. Four months after he gets paid for the last speech, the State Department comes out with environmental impacts supporting the Keystone Pipeline. Why does this matter? TD Bank is the largest shareholder in the Keystone Pipeline. These patterns get repeated again and again and again and I think they deserve further investigation. Mine? Anything indictable here? I'm not a lawyer, and, and I say that clearly in the book. I'm not a lawyer. I'm an author. I don't have subpoena power. I can't look into Hillary Clinton's mind. I certainly can't look at her emails. I don't have any of those capabilities. But I would compare it to, like, insider trading. When they prosecute people for insider trading, lots of times they don't have a smoking gun, but they see a series of well-timed trades a from an A pattern of behavior. Yes. Okay, let me ask you about one thing in specific. Sure. About Ericsson, the telecom company. Yes. April 2011, Ericsson's named in the State Department report for supplying telecom equipment for the oppressive regime in uh, Belarus. Yeah. Further on down now. On November 12, 2011, Bill appeared at a telecom conference in Hong Kong, paid for, he was paid by, by uh, uh, Ericsson, $750,000, yep. and talked in general terms about the role that telecom plays in our lives. One week later, on November 19th, the State Department unveiled its new sanctions list for Iran. Telecom was not on the list. Now, are you implying that the State Department sprung into action in seven I, days? I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not implying that. What I'm saying there, and I showed numerous examples, Erickson, for example, had never paid Bill Clinton to give a speech before. So? His average speaking fee be <laughs> before Hillary became Secretary of State is about $190,000. Suddenly out of the blue, while they are named in State Department reports, and there's several examples, not just the one you cited, involving Erickson and the State Department, they suddenly, in the midst of all that, decide to pay him $750,000. Is there evidence of a quid pro quo in that case? No, I'm not saying that. But it should be troubling for us that the day of January 2009, Bill Clinton's speaking fees from foreign overseas interests, governments and corporations, triples triples. Did he become more eloquent all of a sudden? I doubt it. He's a very eloquent speaker. I think it's because his wife became Secretary of State. And they were glad to take the money. Well, Peter, the pushback has been that there's no explicit smoking gun. It, right. it's, it's the appearance. What's your ideal end game here with the book? Do you want 
subpoenas to go out? Do you want people to get access to specific documents? And, and if so, do you think there are emails, things, documents that show an explicit quid pro quo? You know, that's a great question. I do think there needs to be investigation by people that have the capability to look at emails and to look at other um, sorts of information like that. What I would point out, though, is this standard that there's no quid pro quo. If you look at, uh, you know, the former governor of Virginia mm -hmm. who was prosecuted, if you look at Senator Menendez, there's no quid pro quo, and yet they were prosecuted because there were contributions or payments or gifts given to public officials uh, with the perception or the belief that there was going to be given something in exchange. What was this uh, understanding with the State Department about Bill Clinton's activities? Because spouses are, are watched closely. Mika's, Mika's Department. talked about this an awful lot where she yeah, can't. Yes. What was their yes. understanding? She can, yeah. yeah, the understanding was is that Bill Clinton's speeches were supposed to go under review or vetting by the State Department. Mm -hmm. I've looked at those letters. They came out via um, a FOIA. And what you find is that they never rejected a single speech by Bill Clinton. So the State Department allowed it? Yes, the State Department okay. allowed it, but so it was... Let, sorry, go ahead. To my finish. next point then, um, you say are of even greater concern, this is the setup for the whole book, is that foreign policy players giving money to the Clintons include foreign governments in countries like Russia, India, and the United Arab Emirates, where there are major foreign policy issues at stake. There is nothing clearly illegal about these payments, but their source, size, and timing raise serious questions. Your book is questions. I, 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 I just wonder how does that not be interpreted as, as clearly political? You, there's, there's nothing here that's evidence of illegality. Uh, I don't think the standard at NBC News or any news organization would be that we only report things when we have evidence of illegality. I think if you see a pattern of behavior But of I can question the timing of your book. She just announced a run for president. Yes, this book has been in the works for more than a year. So I did not certainly coordinate this with her launch of her campaign. What, what I'm saying is, is that I began this investigation last year because you have an unprecedented situation that the Obama administration recognized. Okay. This is why they signed the memorandum. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I gotta jump. Here. I haven't said anything. I'm going to jump in here. It's, it's, I, I, I don't get this. I'll be really honest. I'm looking around here, and I don't get this. I'm, I'm certainly, I, I mean, if, Peter, if Peter's been reckless, go ahead, say he's been reckless. But I worked with guys in Congress that went golfing like one or two times in Ireland, and then six months later put a bill on the floor of the House and they went to jail, and we're sitting here going, wait a second, wait, now maybe no, he I just got paid three times the amount. Maybe Belarus or telecom companies, or maybe this or maybe, come on, we're not naive babes in the woods. And I know you're playing this game, I'm gonna be a tough professional journalist, no, and that's hey, really Joe. awesome, but Mika, Bob McDonald, yeah. Let's look what Bob McDonald did. Mm -hmm. What Bob McDonald did pales in comparison to what's in this book. And what Bob, what Bob Menendez did. did pales in comparison to this book. The Clintons have made $150 million over the past decade uh, because of contacts they made during public service. I will now sit back and let you go and ask those tough questions. I'm just curious, though, why are the Clintons held to a standard that Bob McDonald's not held to, that Bob Menendez is not held to. Did all of these congressmen that get thrown into jail uh, for going on a like going to a Redskins game or going yes. on a golf trip who, compared to 150 million dollars? The golfing trips. Your friends in Congress who yes. were called on. Who, who who called them out on that and who held them accountable? What do you mean? The Justice it Department wasn't did. Peter Schweitzer. It was the Justice Department. Oh, well, no, Where are no, they? no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that news that that newspapers and reporters shouldn't shouldn't go out and report on this? Because I'll tell you, when Peter Schweitzer was talking about a Congress insider trading, we had him on the set. Great job, way to go. You're great. You've called this out. Sixty Minutes had him on there. Great job. But it's the Clintons, and suddenly, oh my God, let's bow not, down before. Bill Bill and Hillary, because if we ask the same questions of them that we ask of every other them. politician, then oh my God, we have crossed a line. It's like it's like that 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 part in Indiana Jones where you cross the line and the rock comes after you. You've got to run fast because <laughs> you dared cross the Clintons' line, who made, may I add, 150 million dollars, while dudes get thrown in jail for going on a golf trip in Ireland, and the weather probably even. Sucked. So, so I don't really understand the shock and awe here. I, I'm not shocked. I'm no, not you. Awed. Everybody's acting shocked and awe. Hold here. on one second. I'll say nothing else. Thank you. Do you believe that? You probably shouldn't. Zip Go it. ahead. Uh, I am questioning 
what you have based this book on because I think it helps hash out the questions that are it, in the book. But I'm also pushing you a little bit. Sure, no, because and I, you know what? No one has found anything that is proof of illegality. I think there is perhaps rules that have been bent. I'm curious as to why they are bent for the Secretary of State and her spouse and not other people in the State Department. I want to know if you question the Obama administration about this. I would like to hear the answers to those questions. Please stand by so I can get that. Yes, Peter. I mean, we contacted a lot of people for a comment and input on this. I think and? that, I, and, well, and, and really no responses whatsoever from any of the investors, from the Clintons and others, etc. The bottom line is that the Clintons signed a memorandum of understanding with Valerie Jarrett and with President Obama's transition team that they were going to correspond with a certain number of agreements, including the disclosure of all contributions. Did that happen? No. It did not happen. And, and you and, have proof of that. And, 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 you were we, sure of that. We do have proof of that. They That's actually important. admitted now that they, that they did not reveal all their contributions. And in this particular case, it was the chairman of a Russian-owned uranium company uh, in Canada that was donated $2.5 million that was never disclosed by the Clintons. The but, book is tied. Well, I think, I think you've had your say. I, I haven't had a chance to talk yet in this segment, but I just like listening. <laughs> Let's let Mike Barnacle have his say. Go ahead, Mike. Let's yeah. play a game. Yeah. That's Hillary Clinton. That's Bill Clinton. Yeah. You haven't had a chance to talk to him. What question, if you were only get one question to ask each of them, ask them the question. Well, I would ask them, first of all, as it relates to this book and as it relates to the emails, did you consider the emails related to the Clinton Foundation the private ones that were deleted? There's a lot of transactional behavior in the book, and it relates to far-fung corners of the world, and I would love to see emails or information related to any correspondence they had related to major Clinton Foundation supporters, people right. sponsoring speeches, and official actions that were taken. Can I answer that effect. question? Yeah. It depends on what your definition of deleted is. The book is entitled <laughs> Sons and Cash. Peter oh, Schweitzer, sorry. thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate having you on. It was great having as you on, Peter. As do all of us. Thank you. I'll